Listen, I got laid off two weeks ago, and last week I made a video about it, and in the very first day, I got this gem of a comment. Now go ahead and pause the video if you can read the whole thing, but by and large, this person is telling me that uh, I just need to adjust my attitude and work on my skills, and I would never get laid off. Now, anyone who's been a software engineer or even like a professional worker at all realizes that this is such an insane comment, but uh, to be honest, you know what? I wish he was right. I wish this was a true statement. I wish that all I had to do was have the right attitude and work on my skills because that would mean that absolutely all of my employment, the rest of my working days is all dependent on everything that's in my control. But sadly, that's just not how things work. But in this video, I kind of want to expand on the idea about like what is in your control to prevent yourself from getting laid off. Now, those two things are very important, your attitude and your skills, but there's a couple more things that you can do to make sure that you don't get laid off in the future. Okay, first things first, uh, why would you even listen to me? I just announced that I was laid off, so why would I have any sort of uh, professionalism around this topic? And the thing is, is, yes, I did get laid off, and I know exactly why I got laid off. And this is the third time in my whole career I have been laid off. But the important thing to know is that I've been doing this for 15 years, and yes, I've been laid off three times, but I have dodged getting laid off 10 other times. I've been through 10 different layoffs in different companies and not been chosen to be laid off. So throughout my whole career, I have these five lessons of how to avoid being laid off. And I hope that you guys can pay attention to the whole video because by the end of the video, I want you guys to understand the things that you can control so that you are in a position where you do not get laid off. You're the one that actually gets to stay. Okay, lesson one is obviously the most important lesson, but uh, you should always try your best, do your best, and that is what you can control, is making sure that you're doing the job to the best of your ability and being able to check all the boxes for the job description. That's a lesson. As long as you can do those things, you're above and beyond most people. And lesson number two. Lesson number two is that even if all of your coworkers are insufferable and they're very hard to work with, you still got to work with them. So the idea is that you can still work with other people, still talk to them and get the job done, no matter how much of a pain they are. If you can overcome that and communicate and get the job done, talk to your superiors and your business people about how you're going to make things happen. If you can do that, then that's another skill that is very valuable in every sort of team. Lesson number three, it's important to know your business, the business of the company that you're working for, inside and out. Your company somehow makes money and using that money that it makes or receives, it then pays you. And if you know like the entire flow of how that works and how you can improve get, uh, the business to bring in more money or spend less on their everyday thing, then you become that much more valuable as a person in the company. So the goal here is if you're working on a team that seems like the project or the, the mission for the team isn't very close to how the money flows through the business or how the business operates, then you want to try to move and transfer teams as close as you can to the money and make yourself more of a critical player in the entire business operation. The better chance is that when people have to cut down to the bone, you're part of the bone. You're part of the people that like really support the organization and you're not gonna be a part of the team that gets ripped away. Because in a way, like your company absolutely needs you. As long as you can say that, that your company absolutely needs you, the better chance you are to survive any sort of layoff. Lesson number four, you need to deeply understand how the performance cycle works. Now, every year you do a performance cycle. Sometimes people do it every six months about, they look at your job description, they look at all the stuff you did for the past six months, and they try to say whether or not you can get a promotion or you stay at the same level or what kind of raise you get. This is like one of the most critical points of your entire tenure at the job because whenever it comes down to layoffs, that's some of the documentation, some of the information that they use whether or not they're gonna cut people and who to cut. I've said this many times on this channel, but always having a work log, a notebook, a notepad, anything that covers every single thing that you do so that you can go into your review session and be able to list every single project that you did and how it's good for the company. Your boss will love you, your superiors will love you, and you will know exactly how you bring value to the company and to the team. If you can do that and constantly keep that in check and know that, the better chance you are to stick around when these tough times happen. And lesson five really comes down to 
being ambitious. Now, when you're in software, when you're a software engineer, there's so much creativity you can tap into about how to make the business work better and everything. But when it comes down to it, most of us are working for a for-profit company. So if you can find a way to ambitiously take on a new project or some other idea where you can increase revenue or even like bring down expenses, then that's going to be something that really that really makes you shine and gives you good exposure to the rest of the company. So some examples that I've done in the past is one is that sometimes you have API vendors that you're working with and they charge you per API call. I found out that one of our I found out that some of our code was not using the API properly and we were blowing up our API bill. I proposed a practice to be able to do it the right way, store the right information, and uh, I was able to cut down our API bill from twenty thousand dollars down to four thousand dollars. So that's like, that was a eighty percent cut in the API bill. And in another company, when I talk about communication and communicating with your business partners, I found out that a lot of the business partners really had been asking for a dashboard, a data dashboard, to know more about the business on a daily basis and how they were doing. And they were asking for it for about four years. But the problem with big companies is that you have like Looker, data, uh, Looker dashboards, big business analytic tools. It takes an expert to kind of build up all this. Kind of, it's, it's a big hassle and everyone kept on telling them no. And looking at the data, I was able to spend my lunches for a week to build up this dashboard and just surprise them with this dashboard of the information they were looking for. And the whole business went nuts. They absolutely loved it. They was able to keep on using that dashboard for five more years after I left the company. And the fun thing is, is I didn't know that one month later, they actually had layoffs and I was spared. And one of the key reasons was is because I was riding off of the high of that project that I did well in. So it's taking the taking the ambitious step to try to serve the company's needs and wants and show that you're a person that is thinking about that kind of thing so that you're kind of working for the company. And I hope that we can all learn from the mistakes that I've gone through and the lessons I've learned through 15 years of being a software engineer. And if you try to take all these lessons into practice, you're gonna have a much better chance of not getting laid off in the future. And the cool thing is, is that these lessons are in your control. These are the things that you can do. You can't help when a company just folds because the business has gone bad or when entire branches of the company get shut down for one reason or the other. You can't control that. But what you can do is control where you go, what you do, and how you operate yourself inside of that business because you should, because you should always keep in mind that your job can be temporary. You can get cut at any point. And the sad fact is that a lot of people are feeling this pain today. So if you want more information about how I did, how I got laid off, a lot of people enjoyed this video. And if you also made it down this far in the video, just comment down below some of your layoff stories so that we can all like collect these kind of stories and all learn together so that I can see fewer people get laid off in the future and people are operating and moving their careers in the best direction in the future. But as always, thanks again for watching guys and I'll see you around for the next one.